here. Get data. And uh, add a case after and make a get data state. And so now we can have, here's our new data. Um, and we can, let's see, what do we want to do? We want new data to have, should be something that, small enough number of points that we can see. So maybe 20 points worth of, um, 20 points come in from our imager. And, um, and I'm going to use random numbers because that's a, way to simulate on any hardware actually attached to this thing. So there we can get some data. Always a good idea to run this. So if I run this guy, push the data button, well sure enough we're getting a bunch of data in there. So that's good. Um, it's working. And then again I have no stop button but I should be able to push the red X. The VI stays open. If I pushed it again it would actually close this thing in LabVIEW. I'm saying I haven't saved yet. That's going to be uh, not ideal. So let's see. Here is, um, so this is all working. And now I want to try and um, Let's see, we can now, um, well, let's check out the data and then we can have, create another, uh, another button to put the data onto the graph. So then our next one will be process the data. So um, let's see, I can then add another case here. Process data, value change, drag the process data in there. Um, I can go back and this guy process the data and so the architecture is already starting to work for me as I'm just starting to get into this flow drag a button in create a message and so all this is taking care of itself and I'm basically just breaking this down to deal with this these problems one at a time it makes things nice and simple um, let's see so I'll create a local to grab my new data and uh, when I process the data I will take new data and I can put that to the average, and I'll drop down a mathematics pstat average. And uh, now when I run him, I can get some data. Oh, run, get data. Oh, my stop button turned itself off, right? The VI turns off every time here. So what I need to do is either when I exit or when I enter, I need to actually reset the stop button condition. So I will do that, change him to right, and then create a constant. So that was a little uh, nice little bug there. So now stop button is initialized. I can get the data. Uh, process is not working, so what's going on here? Stop that, figure out what's happening with process. We send the process data message. Process data comes in and should not. Let's make sure that these guys are in fact the same. Let's take that one more time. So we can get data. Process data is not running. So it looks like this button is not actually attached properly. Oh, I attached it to the removed ad. Attached it to the other button. So that was my bad. Looks like I clicked on the wrong spot. So I will edit the events handled by this case and sure enough change it to uh, process data. So there's a, oops, accidentally clicked save. Let's see, um, this is, need an imager event handler example. All right, so now, get some data and we can calculate the average of it. And then um, I'm going to change what my imager does here. Instead of removing bad data, I'm going to uh, I'll add the good data uh, to the graph. And um, I'll just say that you know if maybe if the average is over 0.5, we'll call that good data. So this is where we can do some mathematics as well. Um, so then again, I just come back here and I do the same process I did before. We'll add an event structure. We'll attach it to the right button this time. Drag that button in there. And then I will go and just call the message to 
Um, add data. And so you might wonder, well, why do I want to go through to create this architecture? Wouldn't it be easier just to put everything in the event structure? And the reason to separate these, we'll see in a second, is, is that we can actually have the messages call one another, and then we can add automation to this that's going to be very, very powerful. Um, and it just keeps everything nice and clean. Uh, software architectures are incredibly important and end up being the difference between uh, good data and, or good code and bad. All right, so now we have um, we got our threshold, and we're going to need our average data. So create. So one thing I need to be careful of the way that I'm setting this up is that I'm saying, okay, if the uh, if the good data, if the average data is more than this threshold, then we're going to say the data is good. Um, but I need to make sure that when I set this up, that the um, that the calculation to, to, to process the data actually runs before we, we do this. And so, um, so we'll think about that in a second, but I want to just make a note of that to myself here. And then I will, um, I'm going to need somewhere to, uh, to store the data. So I can store it in the graph, I guess. Um, but I actually like to have separate arrays as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an additional array. Um, called all data and, uh, and he's going to have it's going to be a two dimensional array because he's going to take the new data and just let that data pile up so um, one thing I can do is I want to make sure that because all data is going to grow when I initialize the program I will um, create a constant that uh, data operations empty array that initializes this to an empty array. So then when I add the data, I can have a local 